Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick, uh, leaving the office Saturday, uh, headed to the gym, uh, and got some other things to do, uh, it's going to be a busy weekend for me, uh, because next weekend is going to be extremely busy, so I'm already preparing and laying out everything uh, for that. Before I get started, I want to remind everybody that we are still in the middle of a fundraiser for the organization, especially uh, the work we're doing right now in Black Man Lead. Um, the need to properly and effectively socialize young black males has never been so important. Um, and yet, the programs that are designed to work uh, get very little attention. Uh, what we do see in our communities is a bunch of gassed up, uh, superficial images uh, that really have no actual power or actual effectiveness, but it makes it look like people are doing things, you know, from these organizations, these nonprofits, uh, these political uh, campaigns and strategies and everything like that while the community is going to hell. Uh, it is definitely getting worse each and every year, so these programs don't work. And the programs that do work don't get support, don't get back. And the way that we're going to have to do this is we are going to have to do it all. I can tell you right now, a litmus test that I've run countless times over the last 25 years. Look at the programs that are funded and check their effectiveness. Look at the programs that are not funded and look at what they are able to do with what they do have and check their effectiveness. And it is unbelievably crazy how many programs out there we could actually be behind in improving our community, improving our financial and socioeconomic situation, improving the situation and status of education for our children, preparing a better future for our children, uh, minimizing and reducing violence in the community. There are so many programs out there, but we're not uh, getting them resourced. I've been telling you about Black Man Lead for well over 10 years, and um, I'm doing work, but I'm not doing as nearly as much as could be done, and the impact that could be had um, if we were resourced. So again, the information uh, that you need to show your love and support of the work I do. If you follow me, you know who I am and you know what I, I'm doing. If you haven't, uh, check, the, check the channel out. Then go to our site and check the site out and look at the work I've been doing for decades. This isn't new to me. I didn't just show up. I'm, I'm not a social media uh, activist. I've been doing this for a long time. And I just use social media to help uh, expand my reach. But definitely check it out. If you know me, you know the work I've done. You know what I've given and uh, how much of me I've sacrificed. And now I'm asking for your support so that we can reach these young black boys because we know if we properly socialize them that they're less likely to commit violence. They're less likely to drop out of school and walk away from their education, which increases their ability to earn, support a family, be influential in the community. They're less likely to go to prison. Uh, they're less likely to be violent with their mates. All of this is impacted when we properly socialize young black males. We can't keep going in the direction we're going. So again, uh, show your love and show your support. Um, I'm going to move away from the theme that I've been on about mental health, even though this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, I'm going to move back into the realm of family. One of the most effective tools that white supremacy has used in idling and stifling any type of black progress has been the disruption of the black family and black love. This is not, this is not about finger pointing on either side of this gender war that's going on. This is not about anything but sitting up and pointing to what is obvious. At some point, we 
lost sight of the importance of family. At some point, we became misguided and we bought into narratives that drove wedges. And this isn't to say that there aren't some people that have done some things and some people who have been experiencing things. There are plenty of things that we can talk about and there's plenty of blame to go around. This isn't to sit up and say anybody's perfect. Not at all. What it is to say is if we don't find a way back to each other, we're doomed. And so what do you mean? You know, I don't need a man. What do you mean? Forget them women. That That's, that, that's a huge narrative flying around uh, from both sides. Black men who don't like black women and black women who don't like black men. And this isn't to say that there aren't black women who have been through hell because of black men, because there are. This isn't to say that there aren't black men who had horrible childhoods because of black women. We need to be real and honest about it all. Hell, I'm one of them. But I tell you what, I love hard and I don't mistreat a woman because of what I went through. But I understand how people do that. I'm not justifying it. In fact, I talk, I, I teach that that's not acceptable. And I hold black men accountable, but you gotta understand there's something going on here. But let me tell you why, and then I'll be done. Let me tell you why it's important that we get back there. See, they understood that in order for people as a collective to project forward in a positive way, there had to be a certain level of value, a certain type of universal values, interests, and principles that they practice, right? You know, group economics, self-education, self-value, self-worth, historical awareness, a bunch of things that, you know, economic awareness, financial literacy, all these things, extremely important, right? So they understand that, but, 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 but what they also understood is that's not something you teach to somebody after high school or during high school. That's actually taught in the homes of flu affluent people when children are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, they're being taught principles. They're being taught what the family expects of them. They're being taught how to carry themselves to represent the family. They're being taught what they will do as adults. They are being taught how things will go. And the young boys are told what they're going to do, how they're going to be respected as men, what it takes for them to be respected as men. And the females are being told, this is how you carry yourself. This is what's going on. And this is what you look for in a man. And all these things are being taught. Those are values, interests, and principles that serve those people. And they are inculcated in, into the minds of their children at early ages. And then they are, they are uh, reinforcing it supporting it, protecting it, and guarding it until it becomes ingrained into their psyche and then they go out and they practice it. Well, we, we up here trying to teach 35 year olds the importance of black group economics and we wonder why we're hitting a headstone because by the time you're 35, you are really, really hardwired. It doesn't mean that neuroplasticity does not exist and that you can't develop new thoughts and new ideas. I do it with 60 year olds all the time, but it is work. Oh my God, it's work. Why? Because you've been wired to think some way. And so on an instinctive subconscious level and an unconscious level, you are literally moving in ways that are diametrically opposed to the very thing that you sit up and say you want to accomplish and do. We work against ourselves far too much because we've been conditioned to work against ourselves. If we don't get to the point to where we can restore the family, where we can literally prepare kids to grow up and be what they need to be. We'll still see what we're seeing now. The occasional exception to the rule who gets out and does something extraordinary and then is used against the rest to sit up and say, you could do it too, why aren't you doing it? Without addressing all the reasons why. We can't allow that to happen. It's our responsibility to give all of our children an equal opportunity to get out there understanding what they're capable of, understanding what's against them, understanding how to move in it, understanding what their roles are in the community, understanding what their roles are in the home, and then executing, carrying out those roles and those responsibilities. It is absolutely imperative that we understand this. We are losing because we have no connectivity. We have no means through which we can empower and prepare our youth to go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and compete and win. Why? Because we've allowed the black family to become totally disintegrated. We've become selfish in our thinking. You know, it's about me now. It's not about the, it's not about the house. It's not about the family. It's not about the community. It's about what I want. 
It's about how I feel. It's, it's about whatever. And you look at it and it's just going across the board. Everything is about this. And now they're using this notion of self-care. I'm real big on taking care of yourself. You got to be sure you're okay before you can make sure anybody's okay. Have no problem in that. But when you start pushing self-care into selfishness, it becomes a problem. Because now the most powerful force you can be is someone who is helping someone else. Someone who is looking out. It doesn't mean you do it it, 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 to your detriment but you should understand you're at your best when you're giving it is just the truth it doesn't mean give until you have nothing it doesn't mean put yourself at risk all the time what it does mean is that you can't hide in this corner and sit up and say it's all about me and think that you're actually going to leave an imprint in this world that's not how it happens but if everybody's out there looking out for themselves you know uh hell all you got to do to walk up and say you want to walk out of a marriage and say you have an irreconcilable difference we're not getting along right now hell you with anybody long enough you're gonna have moments where you ain't getting along so what's the commitment why should it be valuable why should it be important why should you look to stand now, i'm not i'm not advocating anybody stay in an abusive relationship i'm not advocating anybody stay in a relationship where they are miserable and they don't see any way that it can be rectified if someone is intentionally and maliciously being mean to you, being harmful to you, uh, disrespecting you, tearing you down, any of those things, I'm not talking to you. I'm not telling you that's what you need. What I am telling you is that there are going to be some difficult times in life. There are going to be some times you're not on the same page. There are going to be some times that you're looking down two different corridors and it can be tough. It can be hard. But if you got to look at it, you got to say, does this person love me? Not is this person doing what I want them to do right now, but does this person love me? Does, has this person shown a behavior that is conducive to saying we can get somewhere where we can find each other again? Because if it is, then it's worth saving. Why? Because we need to take teach staying power. We need to teach. And it's not just in marriage. It's in business. It's in, it, it's in education. It, it, it's in informal mobility. It's in all of the areas of life that will advance us and push us to where we will no longer be a dependent uh, uh, a, a dependent people. Uh, but we are going to have to be willing to acknowledge that we cannot do it from a place of individualism. It just simply cannot happen. And it's so easy to find all the faults and all the reasons. And see, that's a problem. We're trained to see what's wrong. You're going to have to really switch your paradigms and start looking for what's right. We're brilliant. At, at the core, most of us have hearts that love. We've just been banged up so much, we don't trust our hearts anymore. We've got to find that because that's what makes us us. Not being a pushover, but being willing to love on people in a way that empowers them. That's something that's beautiful. That's something that's awesome. That's something that I do. And, and it's a part of my work. And I'm telling you, we've got to get there. You know, I, I just had to drop this on you. I hope that you really take it to heart. I hope that you really, truly embrace it because we need it. And as I close, I'm going to remind you, we definitely need your support. If you believe in the work I'm doing, if you believe that I'm making a difference in any way, I, I need you today to not pass the buck. What I mean, we have a tendency to pass the buck. We have a tendency to say, well, somebody's going to give. I hope somebody gives. And that kind of takes us off the hook. You know, man, somebody's going to support that. Of course, man, somebody's going to. No, I'm asking you, you personally, to support the work we're doing. If you're watching and I'm talking it's to you, support the work we're doing. You know, I just sit up and watched uh, a report uh, about uh, Latrice uh, Colors, uh the founder of Black Lives Matter. And the millions of dollars of donor money they spent on personal homes. She's living in a six million dollar home, gated with a security guard, uh, and it's all this stuff out here. I'm, I'm out here in the hood trying to help boys. Can't get money. She's sitting in a six million dollar house. Ninety million dollars plus. They confirm that's confirmed that they raised on the backs of Mike Brown all the way up to George Floyd. They did that, and we're talking at least 60 million of it unaccounted for, and then some questionable spending on the others. But programs 
that are actually putting in the work can't get any type of support. Uh, it's gonna be, now, now granted, all that money didn't come from us either. They had white people lit and, and, and given. And the problem is now nobody's gonna trust anybody, but the work still has to be done. And so, look, I'm asking, I'm at the gym now, I'm asking for your support. Uh, we've got work to do and it's only gonna happen at the level that we can source it. It's that simple. We can't sit up and magically make things happen. Everything costs. So this is my request to you. Show some love, show some support. You can go into the description box and either click the link and give, or you can give to the organization through our cash app handle, which is also in the description box. On that note, I'm checking out, going in to do what I need to do. Take care.